Hey guys, VBAD here with another V Plays, and we are back in the Faka Wolf 190A1, but this time we've got the airframe upgrade, which unlocked the guns for us, and you saw that at the end of the last episode, as well as getting the second engine, not fully upgraded at this point, but enough that I feel like it has definitely changed the way that this aircraft performs, and has only strengthened the argument that the German grind seems to be harder across the board when it comes to initial upgrades but once you get those upgrades I think you'll all be surprised at how much you appreciate them that much more compared to any other aircraft line you've probably ground in the past so the extra set of 20 millimeter cannons will be your primary damage dealer but what is nice is once you get in nice and close to the enemy you can light them on fire knock out components with the absolute torrent of fire coming out of the seven four seven nine two machine guns mounted in the cowling that are synchronized with the propeller i guess they're not all in the cowling are they two are in the cowling on top and then the other two are kind of in the armpits of the wings but they still need to be synchronized because they're inside of the propeller wash all right, and here's just an example of how quickly you can gun down a target now that you've got this massive DACA, and there is the kill. We got one aircraft left before we should be able to flip this zone. We dropped our bombs immediately as soon as we could. And here's a little trick I discovered. As soon as you leave the edge of that capture circle, it actually makes it so the air defense aircraft immediately break away. So it's a nice tactic to use when you're using a multi-role fighter that has this pseudo boom and zoom type of operation going on because then you can come back and not have to worry about them out turning you inside of the circle. So just something to bear in mind for those of you who have been having trouble with air defense fighters ripping your aircraft apart inside of that capture zone so we've taken the offensive facility so i figure you know what the next best thing is going to be one of these airfields i only realize now that most of my allies are up in the north going after the other airfield but eh, you know what i think i can interrupt this well enough if i can keep them from capturing this zone for a little bit longer it'll keep them on the back foot and it looks like the attack aircraft was at berthold in an fw 189C, that boom tail ground attacker, was taken out by an air defense asset over this airfield, which undid all of their capture progress. So that gives me a little bit more time to come in here and go after some aircraft. This Blenheim in the past would have been nearly impossible to take out in that amount of time with just the 4792s, and we were able to chew him apart with our cannons and just look at the health just rip away from this airframe. Sure, the Blenheim gets his guns on target just then at the end of that engagement, but we're the ones who did the lion's share of the damage on that aircraft. Now, that was enough to flip the capture zone. They still have the rare repair facility up and running, so I figure I'll top off while I'm here, and then I'll go to the middle and start playing in some of that brawling combat, which everybody loves so much. And again, just the amount of damage that you can pump out in this aircraft compared to the past. I'm not saying it's going to win any awards for damage output, but it makes it usable. And that's what's going to be that much better about this airframe since it was nearly unusable originally. I'm kind of glad I'm grinding this line after I've ground several other lines because it'll make it that much easier. An interesting note, when you get further up the line, uh, I think it's the next Focke Wolf actually, has the ability to upgrade to four 20mm cannons, and they're already unlocked for me on, this, on the next airframe, and the reason that they're already unlocked is they carry over from the ME265 of all things. If you guys remember me grinding through the 265, one of the things I complained about was that the 20s and the 30 millimeter cannons you can upgrade to on that airframe don't come with its stock they don't carry over from the me 410 despite them being the same relative cockpit and airframe for the most part uh, the guns for whatever reason were mounted kind of in the wing roots of the aircraft instead of the nose or the center of it center line itself so as a result um, you had to unlock those and it was a real pain for the ground attacker to unlock those guns just even more attributing to my argument that the germans are a tough grind but that does mean that they carry over to the fock of wolf 190 which means that i will be able to get uh the guns 
the extra 20s unlocked on the, it should be the A5 if I'm not mistaken, but I thought that that was a pleasant surprise of things that will move along with me. So, didn't take much, but we are definitely doing well in this match. We've managed to take both of the command centers, one of the airfields, and the center garrison. So, at this point, I'm just trying to get some extra damage in. I guess I lit that Yak-7 on fire, and that was enough to take him out. The airspeed, or the acceleration on this aircraft, even with just the second engine and still carrying an air-to-ground loadout, is enough to keep up with this Blenheim F. Blenheim F. But bear in mind that you are talking about a, what is this, a tier 4 versus a tier 5 multi-roll. So, in all fairness, I should be catching him. Well, there's not much left to do here, so I think I'm going to head over to that airfield and see what I can do to help there. Uh, the bombs are back up, so that's a nice little damage augmentation. Uh, I put a note in it in the last video that I misspoke and said that these are SD-100s. They're actually SD-50s, 50, so 50 kilogram bombs, and if I'm not mistaken, it's like a 2.2 pounds per kilo. So that's a little over 100 pounds per bomb on this one. So he's carrying a total of about 400 and some change in bomb loads. So I typically drop all of those on one site. I might not be able to flip it, but at least I'll be able to cause some damage. Another good option for these little bombs is to drop them on the air defense sites just to take out the low altitude guns to help your ground attackers out so that way they're not getting chewed up as bad. Or better yet, not chewing you up while you're getting into low altitude fights. So I just passed, uh, I believe that was, it's either a Bristol or a KI, we'll find out in a minute. But <clears throat> I'm using my acceleration and engine power, and even though I'm going outside of what's my comfortable altitude envelope, with a massive boost pool that this aircraft has, oh, it's a, it's a Bristol, I'm able to turn the tables, get around on them, and now here's that burst damage that we'd never had before, and now we can kill that aircraft in a single pass. Granted, I could have waited a few more seconds and got him at squall line, but I'm okay with this result. We cannot support you any longer. There isn't much here at this point. Uh, just air defense aircraft and obviously some ground targets. So it's squall line. I need to be careful that I don't get taken out. Otherwise, I'm not helping anybody. This boomerang was target fixated on my bomber. I'm okay with that. And now this other boomerang is having trouble getting up to this altitude. You can see he's kind of falling out of the sky. Puts him in a bad energy state. And now I have my opportunity. Whoa, okay. It looks like that bow fighter wanted to come in and ram me. I knew he was going to try and ram me, but I didn't know if I could get away. So I'm going to go into a vertical climb. I got one of those little bugger fighters on my tail. I figure he should be breaking off soon. I think he's gone. Now I'll bring the nose back down and go after this bow fighter. Get some revenge even if this isn't the bow fighter they're all the same bot right so let's get down here and grab this other one and vengeance is mine so one more aircraft should do it for air superiority I, uh, can i get this guy in one pass no not quite but i bet i could flip the zone with some bombs i'll drop two there and two here should be enough to take out that site and yep that did it air supremacy is achieved and that should pretty much be the match at this point, so not a bad showing. Uh, great thing is um, this was going to give me a decent amount of XP for me to be able to unlock the last engine on this aircraft. So let's see what we got on the end result screen. All right, 6,400 XP, not too bad. That should be enough for us to unlock the last engine and make this grind just that much easier. And we also got our second crew skill. Uh, I'm actually going to dump that second crew skill into Engine Guru since this thing seems to rely heavily on its airspeed. I was able to use it not only in the last match, but in this match as well. And I feel like having that airspeed boost and acceleration boost will do well for me considering it's a 16 second boost Time, which is definitely nothing to turn your nose up at. It is a great asset to have on your 
side and allows you to remain competitive. So that should be it for the Focke Wolf 190A1. Next video I should be posting in this series will be the A5. It'll take me a little bit of time to get that one unlocked because tier 5 to tier 6 is when you start to see a longer grind. I can tell you that the number of battles it took to get from the HE 112 to the Focke Wolf 190 was a total of six battles. And in order to get the aircraft to this stage fully unlocked for the 190A1 was only three battles. It wasn't too bad considering it's the times three weekend and I already have a lot unlocked from the 109 grind as well as the BF 109 Z line. So I guess that's the 262 line, but I digress. Fact of the matter is, it's not too bad if you're doing this as your last line you grind with the Germans, so it's definitely a little bit easier than it could have been. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up the video, guys. As always, if you liked the video, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, and I'll catch you on the next one.